Um, so just a reminder that I hope you guys are all going strong on your Lent readings. And if you haven't started, it's okay, no problem. You can start today. And so uh, you can find this online on our church website. You go to the Children's Ministry tab and you can download it and print it there. On Easter Day, you bring it back and you will receive a small surprise. But the best part is we get to celebrate Jesus' resurrection together. Okay, so this morning, I want to talk about power and authority. So I have a question for you. In your school, who has the greatest authority? It would probably be your principal, right? It'd probably be your principal. But your principal really only has authority in your school. Because if your principal came to my house, the principal would not have the same authority and power she or he has at your school in my home. I probably have more authority in my house, right? And it's like a soccer coach. The soccer coach has authority over his team, but you won't see the soccer coach go into your school and exercise authority and pretend to be your principal, right? And it's like your principal won't go into his soccer team and pretend to be a coach. Today, I'm going to tell you about someone who has authority, not only in one team, one school, one place, one country, but this person has authority and power in all of heaven and on earth. So listen for who this person is. In today's story, the religious leaders did not like Jesus because they felt that he was threatening their power and leadership. And the religious leader, because Jesus spoke with so much authority and wisdom. When Jesus spoke, people listened carefully and they followed him. And so the religious leaders didn't want, didn't really like him. And so they decided, hey, let's trick Jesus. Let's ask him difficult questions and listen carefully and see if Jesus makes a mistake. And then we're going to trap him. And so the religious leader is like, yeah, let's do that. And so they started to ask Jesus some questions. And you know what? Jesus, he is fully human and fully God. So he knew what they were thinking. And he knew that they were trying to trick him. And so, but when Jesus spoke, what did I say? He spoke with wisdom and authority. And he spoke with so much wisdom and authority, they didn't know what to say after. And so one of the scribes, he is an expert of the law. He knew the law very well. And he asked Jesus a very difficult question. He said, Jesus, he said, which commandment is the most important of all? And they wanted to know what Jesus would say because you know what? They knew the law very well. They were ready to argue with him. But, you know, before I tell you what Jesus' answer is, can I just say how, how difficult this question is? Because the scribes, they actually found um, and identified 613 separate commandments. And so what they're asking is, Jesus, out of all these commandments, which one is the most important? And that's what they were asking Jesus. And Jesus, he quoted Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 to 5, saying, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And then, because Jesus is Jesus, he has authority, he added another one. And he said, the second one is love your neighbor as yourself. You know, I really like the way the message translation puts it. And it says, love the Lord your God with all your passion and prayer and intelligence and energy. So basically, you have to love God with every part of you. And that's how they said it. And Jesus says, there's no other commandment greater than these. And so basically, what Jesus did, he got all of the commandments and he put it into two, love God and love others. And you know what? It was a great answer that no one was able to say anything. But the scribe, he actually, the one who asked him the question, he thought about it and he said, yes, 
that's a really good answer. He said, teacher, that's right. To love God and your neighbor as yourself is far more important than offerings and sacrifices. And the man, Jesus realized, the man answered very wisely. And he said, you are not far from the kingdom of God. Okay, boys and girls, that's not very normal for someone to say, you are not far from the kingdom of God, right? I mean, how does Jesus know if someone is far or close to the kingdom of God? The secret is when we come close to the kingdom of God, we are coming close to the person of Jesus Christ. Then he asked them, he asked them a question. He said, whose son is the Messiah? And they were thinking, they said, David's. And he goes, huh, I wonder why, how can that be? Because you know, David, he even called the Messiah Lord. How can he call Messiah Lord if, he, if he's David's son? And the religious leaders looked at each other and they didn't know what to say. And you know what? Their plan to trick Jesus failed and they had no courage to ask him anything else. Boys and girls, in the beginning, I told you there is this one person who has authority in all of heaven in all of earth and that person's name is jesus this is possible because he is fully human and fully god and i know that could be really hard to understand but god the father sent his son jesus so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life but that he would be able to make a way for all of us to have a right relationship and a loving relationship with him god's all of God's power, all of God's wisdom and authority, he gave it to Jesus. And that's why he was full of authority and power. He is also full of wisdom. And you know, in the book of James in the Bible, it says that if you lack wisdom, you can ask for it. You can ask God and God will give it to you generously. And so boys and girls, if you find that you're lacking wisdom, you don't go to Google you go to God because the Bible says the beginning of wisdom starts with God. It's God. So today we learn that Jesus spoke with authority and wisdom, and he gave us the two most important commandments of all. If we were to summarize this book into two commandments, it would be to love God and to love others. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, God, for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for your words and we thank you for Jesus, that through Jesus, we can know what you are like. Father, we know that you are in, um, you have authority all in heaven and on earth. Help us to remember this as we live out our lives here today. Lord, we thank you for teaching us that we, it is impossible to love you without loving our neighbors. Lord, we thank you for loving us. And with that same love, we pray that you would help us to love the people around us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen.